there was one American gospel singer named the Reverend Gary Davis and he came and met Prabhupada in New York in the 1960s. He was quite a famous man, Reverend Gary Davis. He had a lot of recordings of his gospel songs. So he came to Prabhupada and he was asking Prabhupada, Swamiji, what to pray for? He could understand that it's not good to just pray to get money or to get fame or any kind of material thing, but he didn't know what to pray for. Of course, to Srila Prabhupada it was very clear what to pray for. And of course that's our chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Our prayer is Please engage us in your service. Please engage me in your service. So, it, chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is both a prayer and it's the answer to the prayers also. It's the answer to all of our prayers when we're chanting. So today is also an auspicious day. Today is the Vyasa Puja day of his Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. So devotees in Mayapur will be celebrating that event. And Kavi Chandra Swami is going to go there to Mayapur in a little while to take part in the festival there. So Bhakti Tirtha Swami did a lot of wonderful preaching on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> He was a black-bodied American. He joined the New York Temple in Brooklyn, the old Brooklyn Temple, Henry Street, in the 1970s. He was a graduate from Princeton University. He was not some illiterate hippie. He was from, you know, very well educated, Ivy League education and he had a very good job and he started coming to the temple. He met devotees started coming to the temple in Brooklyn. And at one point, uh, Satsparupa Maharaj had written to the temple asking, is there anybody there who could take up the service of being secretary? He said, I need a secretary. <coughs> at that time, Satsparupa Maharaj was based in Texas and he was doing a lot of writing and preaching and he wanted a secretary. So Bhakti Tirtha at that time he was coming to the temple, he hadn't moved into the temple, but he was coming and we all knew him. So we told him, you know, why don't you take up this job? Go and serve Tashvarupa Maharaj. And he did it. He gave up his job and he moved to Texas and he became secretary there for Satsvarupa Das Goswami and he was serving him and traveling with him, and he was doing a lot of nice service. Then at one point Prabhupada began, or he, Prabhupada wanted the books, the, the uh, Bhaktivedanta book trust sets like Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, he wanted they should be introduced into the university. And so they formed the library party. And they were, he was, he was put on that. Tasparupa Maharaj was also heading it up. And they would go and meet professors and they would introduce the Bhaktivedanta Trust books to them. So Bhakti Tirtha Swami, having a very good education from Princeton, he was very good at that and he would go into the universities, he would meet the professors, make nice relationships with them and arrange programs and get them to take books. And then he went to Eastern Europe. At the time when Eastern Europe was still closed, it was still closed. Germany was divided, East and West Germany, and there was like a, a brick wall down the middle of the country. But Bhakti Tirtha, uh, he was engaged in that service, the, going into the Eastern Europe, and introducing the books of Bhaktivedanta Book Trust there. 
And he did very, very wonderful service. He sold many, many books. He cultivated many people. And Prabhupada was very pleased with him. Prabhupada appreciated very much his service. At that time, he was still a brahmachari. Later on, after Prabhupada's departure, then he took sannyas. Actually, Prabhupada had also indicated that he should, he should go to Africa and develop the preaching in Africa. At that time, we didn't have anything really going on in Nigeria or Ghana or anywhere. There was only one center in Nairobi, the, in Mombasa. That was about all, all that was going on in Africa. Maybe, or oh, South Africa, there was a temple in Durban. Anyway, Bhakti Tirtha was then sent to, he went over to Africa and he did pioneering preaching there in Africa. And he became like a, like a king there. He was worshipped like a king. The, the people, the local African people, they made him like one of the rulers there in Africa. But still, he would sometimes come back to the West. I remember uh, Srila Rameshwara Prabhu was describing, he said at one point, they were in, devotees had been invited on a television program there in America, and they wanted somebody to go on this show. But the program was really, it was one of these programs where the person who hosts the show is super nasty. And they can, they, you know, they, whatever you say, they'll just cut you to pieces and they'll make you feel really low. Yeah, you know, they, they, you know, you get these kind of programs where people are really good at insulting other people. So they, they wanted the devotees to go on to the short program. They wanted someone to do it. So they, they called Bhakti Tirtha Swami to come. Rameshwara said, you're the only one who can do it. And he went on the show and, and the, well, the, the interview was so sweet, this became very nice and appreciated Bhakti Tirtha so much. So he had that kind of expertise. He was very, very wonderful, very powerful preacher. And he loved to dance in the kirtan. He was very energetic and lively. Uh, with Lokanath Swami dance, doing kirtan, Bhakti Tirtha would become electrified, <laughs> chanting and dancing in great ecstasy. So today we're remembering him as his Vyasa Puja. Two things that are proud